In anticipation of tomorrow's speech, today the president released his proposed budget for the next fiscal year. It features a boost to defense spending, cuts to some domestic programs, no changes at all to entitlements. Joining us now to preview it, Democratic Congressman Eric Swallow of California, who says this is a bad idea for America's working families. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me back, Tucker. So it seems like, at least in conventional terms, a pretty moderate budget proposal. Now, we don't know the details, but of what we do know, the president says in entitlement spending, which is the single biggest portion of federal spending, will remain unchanged. We're going to increase military spending some. We're going to detract from foreign aid some. What's wrong with that? Still waiting on the details, but not moderate in the increases to defense spending. It looks like it'll be a 10% increase. I'm mostly worried, does this mean we're going to drastically increase our nuclear weapons? And I think that uh, would make us less safe if that's the direction this president wants to go. Well, so he hasn't said that so far. He said... Um, he likes nukes. He, he likes, well, I think all presidents want to defend the, the country. I mean, that's legitimate. Um, but he said he wants to, for example, increase troop strength in the Marine Corps by 12,000. Do you think that's out of bounds? No, no. I, I, if this is just talking about making us safer, fine. But he has talked over and over about we need to increase our nuclear weapons. We have more nuclear weapons than any other country. We spend 36% of our budget already on nuclear on, uh, defense. So I don't understand why post-Afghanistan, post-Iraq, why are we increasing by 10% our defense? Well, presumably, I think, and you and I have talked about this at, in some detail, you believe that Russia poses a great threat to the United States. Which they do is pose the a great other, threat. Right, the other great we have a lot more nuclear, nuclear power. And if it's true, as this president has argued, and a lot of non-aligned people have argued, that our nuclear arsenal is outdated and needs to be updated, why is it crazy to want to achieve some sort of parity with Russia, this great threat? Well, I think unless we're attacking other planets, having thousands of nuclear weapons is probably enough. And we should maintain them, and we do that in my district at Lawrence Livermore and Sandia Laboratories. But increasing the number of weapons, I think that is going to make us less safe. And it's also, I think, a bad use of the money. The money should go into reinvesting in workers, investing in students and student debt relief and making college affordable and making sure we have clean air and clean water. Okay, so but from what we know, the president hasn't said, right, I've seen that this money is all going to increase nuclear weapons. It's going to increase the size of our Navy, for example, our air capacity. Uh, is there anything about it that bothers you? I mean, this, again, this seems like the kind of budget proposal that Democrats might like. And I'm going to wait, uh, Tucker, but right now this president has not had a plan. He's had a tweet, and if you look at his tweets, he talks a lot about increasing nuclear weapons. Okay. Um, so he's saying that we're going to pay for these increases in part by decreasing foreign aid to countries like Egypt, which takes an awful lot of uh, money from the United States. Do you have any problem with that, transferring payments to foreign militaries to our own military. That seems like a wise idea, no? When I ran for Congress, I at first thought foreign aid's a bad idea. That's an easy place to cut. And then a lot of people talked to me and they said, actually, it's less than 1% of the budget and it's actually an investment in our national security because it helps create jobs in those countries and where you have more stability, you're less likely to see those people want to become terrorists. So at first I was against it. I understand why people may be against it. But when you talk about the countries that we're helping, especially in the Middle East, I'd rather see them succeed than spend trillions to fight wars in those countries. Okay, so a perfect example, I guess, is Egypt, which is the second largest, I believe, recipient of American foreign aid. And it has been for you. We've given them billions over the years. And Israel's the number one. That's correct, so by far. But Egypt, I don't think anyone's proposing cutting aid to Israel. But we are proposing cutting aid potentially to Egypt. Do you think that American foreign aid to Egypt has made it a very stable country? I, I think Egypt certainly has its challenges right now. And we've held back in the Obama administration. <laughs> I mean, come on. You saw that, that uh, El Sisi in Egypt was upset because we were holding back helicopters uh, just a few years ago because of concerns about democracy in Egypt. But I, I do think that broadly investing in these Middle Eastern countries by very, very small amounts compared to our total federal budget actually makes us more safe. And we need partners in the world. But it's not simply the Middle East. I mean, we're, we're giving billions around the world, all through Africa. I mean, you don't imagine that, that those countries pose a threat without U.S. foreign aid, do you? And I'm open to going back to the drawing board and looking at where bad investments may exist. But if he just wants to get rid of foreign aid, I actually think that makes us less safe. And right now, this is a president who is alienating our friends, like the Australians, and it seems to be drawing our enemies like Russia in closer. So the world right now is wondering... But we don't, give, a lot, we don't give foreign aid to Australia that I'm aware of, or well, to we, Russia. They're, they're an important intelligence-sharing uh, partner. And right, if we that, roll back sanctions on Russia, that's, that's not germane to this foreign aid. So, I mean, I guess what you're saying is you don't really have any substantial problems with this budget proposal at all. If it cuts foreign aid, I do. If it, if it cuts any foreign aid to weapons, anybody, at anywhere. I do. Well, if it, right now he is saying he's just going to reduce foreign aid. So, again, we need more than 140 characters of details from this president. And so hopefully we get that tomorrow. So, but 
all foreign aid is good? I mean, if is there some no. foreign aid that's superfluous that we don't need? I mean, it should is never there be any a flexibility check. here at all? Of course. It should never be a blank check. And I'm open to looking at if okay, there's so a bad I guess investment. Here's, here's the point I'm trying to make. So I've been around Washington for a while, and every time a president releases a budget proposal or hints at one, the other party always says, this is devastating to working families. You know, the talking points come out. And in this budget proposal, I haven't heard that because there doesn't seem to be that much substantively that you might disagree with. And so maybe I guess the point is you have more in common with President Trump's fiscal priorities than you think you do or are willing to admit. Has that occurred? We don't know what his priorities are. We're 40 days in and this not president any entitlement. has delivered nothing. I mean, this was the businessman, great negotiator president. Republicans are sending us home early because we don't have anything to do. So we're waiting. When was the last time, we can work the last with them, time a Republican president said at the outset, we're not touching entitlements? Well, Let me just we check. shouldn't oh, touch entitlements. Never. I'm not That's going, never happened. I'm not going to go so after will you concede, we, whatever you think yeah, of that, will yeah. you concede that this is a a quantum change from what we've seen before. It reflects what the American people think, which is Social Security is not necessarily it's an entitlement. It's something that we pay for every paycheck, and it's something that should be given back to us when we're right. in our golden years. So the debt's at about $20 trillion, 19 and change, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, if you were making the budget, what would you do about that? Well, I would make investments in people that have a return on investment that reduce our overall spending. And I think right now, what does that 40 mean? million young people right now have $1.3 trillion in student loan debt. The government, $100 million a year on the interest on student loans. What I would do is make the interest zero, put that money in the pockets of young people, allow them to save to buy a home. I'm a renter right now. I'm a perfect right. example of a millennial who understands that we're buying fewer homes, we're unable to start businesses, we're starting families later. So I would actually, what a Republican idea, return the money. So you would the, spend more to reduce the size of well, the debt. So I, that's, think, I think that's it's a return on magic. Investment. No, but that's, that's a return that's on magic, investment. isn't it? Like, how does yeah. that work? It's a return on investment. If it's, I've got a really high credit card bill and I go to Nordstrom's yeah. and double it, does that make my bill smaller? No, if you put solar panels on your house, you may spend a little up front, but over time, <laughs> you're going to see reduction in your energy bill. That's what that is. Congressman, I appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me back. Thanks very much. Yeah.